We will now look at the different types of peering. Private peering is where two network operators agree to interconnect the networks and exchange their respective routes for the purpose of ensuring that customers can reach each other directly over the peering link. Settlement-free peering is where there are no traffic charges and is the most common form of peering on the internet today. Paid peering is where two operators agree to exchange traffic charges for a peering relationship. How these paid peering operate usually depends on the two operators concerned. Bilateral peering is very similar to a private peering but usually takes place at a public peering point, for example, an internet exchange point. Multilateral peering takes place at internet exchange points where operators all peer with each other via a device called a route server. And mandatory multilateral peering is where operators are forced to peer with each other as a condition of their exchange point membership. Indeed, mandatory multilateral peering is strongly discouraged. It has no record of success. There are one or two places in the world where the exchange point and the members have agreed on a mandatory multilateral peering policy. And this works for them in their particular circumstances. But the vast experience around the globe has shown that bilateral peering and multilateral peering are the most successful types of peering taking place at internet exchange points. There's also open peering. Open peering is where an ISP publicly states that they will peer with all parties who approach them for peering. This is commonly found at internet exchange points where the ISP or network operator will participate via the route server. There is selective peering, where an ISP's peering policy depends on the nature of the operator who requests peering with them. At IXPs, the operator will not generally peer with the route server, but will only peer bilaterally. And finally, there is restrictive peering, where an ISP decides who its peering partners are and is generally not approachable to considering peering opportunities. The peering database documents ISP peering policies, and you can reach it through the URL peeringdb.com. I would like to advise all operators of autonomous systems to register the details in the peering DB, even if at the moment the operator is not at an internet exchange point. This gives the AS visibility within the peering community and should the operator come to an exchange point in the future, the entry is visible in the peering DB and can be updated as required. Furthermore, participation in the peering fora is strongly encouraged as well. There is the Global Peering Forum, the GPF, which is where multinational operators and regional operators meet to discuss and negotiate peering opportunities. But every region also has its own peering forum, whether it's European Peering Forum, the Middle Eastern, the Asian Peering Forum, Caribbean, Latin America, Africa, and so on. Indeed, the peering fora are so successful, many countries now operate their own peering fora, either as part of the local exchange point activity or as part of the local network operations group. The slide shows an example of a peering DB entry. This particular one is from the Equinix Internet Exchange point at Palo Alto, the former Palo Alto Internet Exchange. And the slide shows typical examples of the peers available at this exchange point. It shows the address, the contact information, the prefixes used at the exchange point, and the peers present there as well. And you can see the different peering policies that the different peers have, the type of bandwidth that they would connect with, and the address space that they would probably be announcing. The other peering DB entry being shown 
is that of a typical operator. This is a content provider. It shows the locations they're present at, the IP addresses on the peering infrastructure, the bandwidth at the different locations, and so on. So as you can see, the peering DB is an extremely useful summary of which operators are present at which facilities and the amount of bandwidth these operators have available at each facility. So as I said earlier, I strongly encourage all operators who have an autonomous system number to register the AS number in the peering DB and register any other useful information which makes them more attractive to potential peers in the future.